Hey guys, in this episode I'll be featuring John Agron's Brandon Lee collection and it's coming right up. Hey guys, welcome back. Charles Damiano from the Bruce Lee Collection. Once again here with John Agron. We're having some fun featuring a lot of his Bruce Lee Collection in these really exciting episodes. And he has a really nice display of Brandon Lee memorabilia, which I'm gonna have him take you through in a second. It's part of a, an entire wall dedicated to Brandon Lee and the Crow. I know John, you're a big fan of Brandon Lee. Oh, yes. I've been collecting many, many years. And uh, uh, I love Brandon too, uh, when he came out back in the 90s. And it was unfortunate that we lost him very similar to his dad, you know, after uh, four movies and then working on the fifth, just like his dad. So ironic how all that came about. But, uh, and you were here living in uh, Wilmington, right? When uh, Brandon Carolina. passed? Yeah, in Wilmington, about 45 minutes away. What do, what do you remember about that story when you heard the news that he passed and you were, what, 45 minutes away from where I had it happened? A, I had a buddy that was actually on the set and when he was shot, uh, he called me up and said, Brandon just got shot. And so I said, I haven't seen anything on the news. And he said, no, it just happened. He just says, they're, ru they're rushing him to the hospital. So immediately I started calling all my friends and telling them, hey, Brandon just got shot. They told me the same thing. Oh, no, that's not true. You know, we haven't seen anything on the news. Um, and so and later on that evening, I was glued to the TV. And of course, you know, there was a, the news that Brandon was, was, had been shot. Of late martial arts star Bruce Lee has died. 27-year-old Brandon Lee was killed during a movie set accident today. He was filming a scene for the movie The Crow when he was hit by a projectile fired from a gun loaded with blanks. According to producers, when a blank is fired, normally a piece of soft wadding comes out, not a projectile. Police are investigating, but don't suspect foul play. You may remember his father, Bruce Lee, died mysteriously at 32 years old. And I started collecting all the newspaper clippings and, you know, and then, of course, you know, Linda and Eliza traveled mm -hmm. uh, near here, like 12 minutes away from here to the hospital. Anzal Memorial is where they had uh, Brandon's um, autopsy. And, um, you know, tragically he, he passed wow. and, and we lost another great one, you know, somebody that was going to carry on the legacy of Bruce. You know? I know, it was unfortunate. And then, uh, it's just similar to Bruce, older than Crow five Merchandising. Movies. I know, Five Moods. It, it, it's almost a mystery, right? It's a very it's very ironic how, how similar the situation was. But And there's a lot of controversy of people saying, you know, you know, maybe Brandon was killed, maybe Bruce was killed. You, you have any uh, thoughts on that and how you feel about that? You know, people say that Brandon kind of was in the midst of maybe talking more about how his dad was, you know, uh, passed yeah. away and maybe they thought something was going to be uncovered. That's what I heard. You I hear heard, all these theories I heard those, out there. There's theories too that Brandon was going to open up some kind of investigation into yeah. his father's passing and all that. And to me, all of that to, to me now is irrelevant. Yeah, I think so um, too. Because there's nothing we can do to bring him back. Exactly. All we have is his memories from his great films. And, uh, you know, what I liked the most about Brandon, how humble he was, yeah. all the interviews I have on him, he was a very humble guy. He was coming into his own. He never used his father's legacy to promote himself. Exactly. He wanted to be known as Brandon Lee, not like some of the posters, you know, the son of the legendary Bruce Yeah, he Lee. never enjoyed he that. He didn't want to yeah, be in the shadow. That. He wanted to make a name for exactly, himself. Exactly, exactly. And it's funny because just like his father, he started out in the cheesy kind of films mm -hmm. and then he developed into The Crow, the, the best one, the final one. Which is what made his name and made him... It, it's so you know? similar, right? Bruce went to Hong Kong, did a few movies. Brandon went to Hong Kong, did a few... And then they came back and he did Showdown Little Tokyo, right? USA, Rapid Fire, Rapid and then Fire. The Crow. Yeah. And then Bruce comes, does the USA, and then they both passed at the, at the thing. height of their career. And, you know, of course, Brandon had his TV appearances, you know, also, you know, on the Kung Fu. Yeah, movie, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, David Carradine's yeah, son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Kane's son. So, wow. yeah, very similar stories. Yeah, I know, I know. So, listen, why don't we... Uh, why don't we look at some of this stuff? I'm going to let you explain uh, some of the items that you have back here. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to just uh, video you uh, talking about a few of these because you have a really amazing collection on uh, Brandon Lee. So why don't we start uh, maybe at the bottom of there on the table at the bottom. Like, what do you have down there? That's a okay. really and nice display of lunch boxes. Over and here I have um, card sets. I have uh, cassettes of the movie soundtrack. I have a pretty unique uh, Crow lunch box. If anybody knows, the creator and the writer of, uh, of The Crow was James Obar, and he based The Crow on his own tragic uh, experience. And this was one of the uh, lunch boxes that he originally did, and it has all the, the lines from the movie actually on it, and it's very, very graphic lunch box. Um, and I figured it, it was very related to The Crow. And just various Crow lunch boxes, there's like four different lunch boxes with different things on them. 
Um, I got a crow uh, board game there. That's that's a kind of a rare piece mm -hmm. to, to find. Uh, here's another crow lunchbox. Um, I have uh, the crow pillowcases. They came out with a lot of different <laughs> things. Here, there's a uh, here we have a fleece throw rug. If you can see, here's Brandon's image on it. Wow, look at that! It's beautiful. It's a throw rug, a fleece throw rug. I've had that for a number of years. Um, there's a big print back here that's covered up. That's signed by James Obar. There's another lunchbox there, small print. This is a very rare comic book. This is actually the back cover of the comic book. The front cover is a Crow comic, but this back cover is very rare. This thing sells on eBay for like $50, $60. Wow, it's beautiful. I just got this. And because I thought this was the front cover, and when I opened it up, come to find out that that's the actual back cover. Beautiful. It's a beautiful shot of Brandon's on, on the rooftop there. Um, and then, of course, you know, the thermoses that came with the lunch boxes uh, back here. Uh, two different series of, uh, of, of figures. This one here was uh, 1749 out of 5,700 figures. Okay. And then you have the more rare figure, which is he actually has a real coat on. And this is the rare of the two, although it's the same figure. This one is number 561 out of 1,500 wow. because it came with a coat. Okay. Um, and then I have, you know, just miscellaneous figures uh, over here that, you know, very common. Anybody can get these. Um, here's something really, this is the vinyl kit that came out. It says Brandon Lee Believe in Angels. Okay. And I have it built up over here. I got this from my very good friend, Perry Lee. Okay. Beautiful the way they did this. Somebody actually custom made the base with the crow on it. And that's it painted. That's what it looks like. Well, it's beautiful. They did a very they good job. They did a great job it. with that. Yes. And I, I thank Perry Lee for letting me have that that piece. And I um, see you have the rapid fire poster up there. Right. And that is the promotional rapid fire poster. If, if I were to take this off the wall and invert it, everything is backwards on it. This was the, the, the one that they did to do a test. And then I have, you know, a couple of uh, rare uh, James Obar, these won't come off the wall. Yeah, that's cool. But these, these are rare. They're, they're like signed, numbered prints that was signed by James Obar. Um, here's another piece I got off Perry Lee. It's, a, it's an actual little pog, and it's signed by James Obar in the back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what do you have Brandon on that? Lee Association uh, uh, card, the uh, membership card, and it's got Bruce and Brandon both on it. Uh, Brandon Lee's autograph. Okay. A lot of times when people run up to celebrities, if they have anything, a 5x7 card, a piece of paper, they scribble and sign on it. And this is what, what uh, the signature was. This has been authenticated. And I have one with Brandon's signature on a rapid fire press book. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, we got this uh, flask. They came out with all kind of crow merchandise and toys. Uh, these are wrappers from different card, card series they came out. There's a Funko Pop uh, figure of the crow. And then what do you have on that top shelf up there? What's that big uh, that bust, bust? That's one of 500. Hollywood collectors that. put out a, a bust of Brandon. And they put two different ones out on Bruce, which you'll see upstairs. Next to it is a snow globe, a uh, bobblehead, and a very limited edition figure. Um, off the top of my head, I can't remember. I think I showed that in the Brandon Lee episode. Yep, that's beautiful. Um, and then, of course, you got the crow cola over here. Okay, this was a promotional item to promote the crow. Um, rapid fire promo trailer. Is that 16 millimeter? 16 millimeter. Look at that, nice. Okay. Um, what else? You got the little diary with the locket. Love never dies. Okay. Um, stepping over here, you have a 18 inch talking figure. Very heavy. Okay. Very good likeness. Beautiful figure. Never been out the box. Um, of course, who could do without uh, crow uh, calendars, okay? <laughs> I have several different ones of those. I got three of them out right now. Here's one on the wall, a couple of different figures, um, just, just a variety of things. Um, of course, you know, there's not a lot of crow merchandise out there. I, I still have more, but I don't have any space right now. So once I develop more space, I'll be putting that out. Um, up on the walls, I got some, some photos of him. I've got the hand drawing of uh, the crow. I've got a hand drawing of uh, him and his father up there. And then of course I got some uh, posters from the UK up there on the walls. I've got the six foot uh, poster here 
of him walking through the doors and then of course more posters up there and then a couple of more over here on the door um, and that's about it for the crow uh, what wow. I have displayed I wow. hope you enjoyed that so uh, I wanted to thank you for that crow display that was really amazing and I want to thank you guys once again for watching John the go and as he uh, went through all his crow memorabilia here he's sliding out another uh, great poster let's hold that one up real quick see 1994 wow. amazing amazing so uh, yeah this is a great collection man I appreciate you uh, showing us this and sharing this with the fans and collectors out there hope everyone and enjoyed uh, it. yeah hope you guys enjoyed it please remember to like the video give it a thumbs up if you're new to the channel please remember to subscribe and once again Charles Damiano with John Agron signing out from the Brucey collection saying have fun collecting thanks for watching guys